Okay, so another question? Yes, Ryan. Aaron, I was in uh, both of them, and in The Darkest Night, you play Greed. Mm -hmm. Did the cast ever make you want to turn into Rage? Due to <laughs> he was very... Um, we couldn't stay concentrated for long, could we? <laughs> Riley and Lawrence could back me up on that one. Yeah. Out of respect, <laughs> I will say it was, a, it was a living nightmare at times, yeah. Um, <laughs> you try. But <laughs> I think it, it did end up working for us because it's not like we got to the point where... We were like, oh no, we're you know, we're just going well, we actually know we wait we did go off track so many times. <laughs> but I think having that chemistry there, like all that chaos there, whilst it did made me want to, yeah, I, I did cast myself as Red Lantern at one point. I think it would have been easy to play that at some point, <laughs> but um yeah, I'm happy with the way it turned out because if we didn't have that fun there, it wouldn't have come across in the um in the final show and we needed that there. Um but yeah, I did. I, I, not angry, just very angry. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yes, so Harry, you. in your last piece, you um, sorry, I'll let Jodine go in a minute. You, you um, <laughs> you were working pretty much by yourself, and then for this piece, you were directing other people. So I wondered what what's the main thing that you've learned about directing through this process? Maybe not just the frustration. Yeah, it's the main thing is that it's incredibly difficult, but. Um, I've learned that it's it is all about trust um, because it goes both ways because if people are coming onto this project they're trusting you or they're trusting me to do the best I can for them then I'm also putting my trust in them to then do the same thing it's very symbiotic in that way and that's mainly what I learned it's not about just oh you do this then you do that then it's or at least for me my directing style I've learned is more freeing because I want I wanted everyone else to bring their own thing it's I think if you keep it too rigid and just read the lines there and do that at that exact moment you lose a bit because the whole project is about everybody coming together and all our different styles bouncing off each other whilst I might have like the technically as the director the loudest voice you just use that to give everyone else uh, their voice and I think yeah, it's like basically equated to cooking. You've got all the right ingredients. Whereas if you just used one, you could could have something nice, but it'd probably just be bread at the end of the day. It's not something amazing instead. And yeah, that's the main thing I learned just to just to put just to have everyone work off each other, not just my vision. This is what we're doing. So yeah. Okay. Judy. Um, I was really impressed with the editing on the middle one sorry I can't remember the exact title um how did you go about creating that like did you storyboard it first and plan all the shots or was it more like you tried things out and then you had to go back and shoot different things because there's so many there were like really short scenes and you'd clearly decided where to put the camera and that had a really nice effect on the feeling of being in this like enclosed space so I just wondered how you went about creating it um, well, I took a few cues from how I did my last festival show because I had to kind of piece it. I did it in the same way as if it's kind of just one long running thing. But a lot of it was just um, I had improvising it, just what felt right at that time. So it, I started off just because I did it all in chronological order as well. So it didn't, I didn't have the camera set up in one place and do a bunch of lines throughout it because I thought, if the camera is, if I'm making these decisions on the fly as well, it kind of links into what the character's feeling as well. Kind of like he is always darting around the stage. So in my mind, it's however I actually, however I ended the line before, if I walked off or anywhere, that is where the camera would then go next. So uh, yeah, there wasn't, the only times like things I had planned were like, say if it was very far back and like to show the whole stage or, um, when I'm sat down you know, with the coat around me with the purple lights, that I always knew I wanted it very close. But apart from that, it was, yeah, just a lot of improvising. Um, uh, yeah, that was, because I thought it'd be, it'd be very uh, taxing to do all that, because I knew I'd end up arguing with my past self at that point as to, no, I've done this wrong, but I'm going to stick to it anyway. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's just a lot of improv for that one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, another question? Yes, Scott. 
Um, in uh, in the third one, uh, you, you mentioned like you can see the different emotions coming out of the lanterns, like saying, oh, you could be angry, but at the same point, you could also be happy. Would you say the per the perfect example of that would probably be uh, Charlotte with how she kind of goes from rage straight into happiness, like just instantly and then goes back into rage? Yeah, that was something we, um, well, I decided to work on quite early with her because um, it was, we put like, I just basically said, why don't we try this? And then credit to her, she ran with it and she made it her own. So yeah, I think Rage was the, probably the best example of that because, well, it's the easiest example as well. It was, you can have Rage and then easily just turn it over to happiness. There's very much two sides to that. Whereas the others are very, uh, there's a lot more uh, complexity to them as opposed to just Rage. Um, Cause I think they all have that. And that's not me saying anything bad about like the character of the thingy. It was just, yeah, Rage was the easiest one to personify of that. I think that's why we put more focus into that than the others, yeah. I'm glad it came through. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, somebody else? Yes, Lawrence. Um, obviously, after seeing the performances when they're finished, you kind of especially me after like hearing about them and then being in one it's very different to see them are there any things that you've watched back and thought oh I wish I had like any characters that you wish you'd done yourself looking back or that you would brought in someone else for um I don't think I wouldn't have brought anybody else um I actually wouldn't have changed anybody but there were a few characters when I was writing them before I'd cast like Yellow Lantern, I thought that's such a good role to play. But I thought, I can't keep in everything. I'm going to take a step back. And I'm so happy that I did because Aaron was absolutely perfect for that. Um, so, yeah, there were characters that I thought when writing, that's going to be really, that'd be really fun to play. But it's also so much fun to write them as well. And I don't have to remember the lines at that point as well. So, I have the fun of writing them and getting to be that character for a bit and then handing it off to somebody else and then seeing what they do with it because. Even though whilst I think Yell yeah, Lantern would have been very fun to play, I would not have done as good a job as Aaron. He truly took that on and made it his own. And um, yeah, in terms of just everyone who was in this, I'm so happy with the cast that I got. Um, but yeah, that's it. I, would have, I wouldn't change a thing with this cast right now. <laughs> Thank you very much. Any other questions? Yes, Jodine. Um, just because, Harry, you were talking about working with the cast, it'd be interesting to hear from anyone who was in any of the pieces, like uh, what what was the process like for you and how, how did Harry work with you? And what was that experience like being directed, particularly in being directed for a piece for camera? Because um, obviously we're all learning to do that now <laughs> and may not have had much experience of doing it before so everyone's kind of learning how to do stuff like differently so yeah I wonder what your experience was of being directed um by Harry and specifically being directed to perform to camera so we have yeah Lawrence go for it um I obviously I've kind of had a bit of a shift in moving to the camera because of everything that's going on. Um, work, the way Harry worked with us for it and especially worked with me, it was always very much about getting the character down first and then seeing, right, if we have to translate that to camera, how can we get that across without making it feel like we're making it for the screen? So one of the initial things with my, with um, the Violet Lantern was initially we kind of had one idea of the way it should have been with this like really over the top lovey dovey everyone is amazing and I love you all and I'm so beautiful and then it was I'm actually I am beautiful and I'm better than everyone <laughs> and we kind of ran with that for I think about two months we ran with that being the main part of the character and Harry just said, you know what? Just everyone try something different for one run. 
see how it feels. And that was when I tried, we tried it as Violet being more childish and like love is this innocent thing of just everyone is amazing and I'm happy to see everyone. And I think Harry kind of latched onto that as like, yep, that's that's what it needs to be. It it was really fun to play. And it kind of it also said a lot about how good he was at adapting to things. Like even though he had a vision, he wasn't against changing that for something more interesting to come about. Good. Uh, yeah, Ryan. I thought working with Harry was like brilliant because like obviously being a third year, we've got a lot of work to do. So like he understood that. So like we'd have like for it for third period, we would be on Wednesday. So we had a case study in the morning. Then we'd have projects in the afternoon. Then we'd have like an hour break and go to Harry. So, but like, I remember asking him, can I like, can we have a week off, you know, like from Finger? And he understood it because he, he, um, he understood how, you know, how important it was and how busy it was. And not just that, he let us play around as well with our lines. Like he touched on it, there was nothing strict. So I played like a little game with myself where I try to catch him off guard with some of the stuff I said. And I, and I look up and I can just like catch him laughing and stuff like that. So like, it, like it working with him was like easy because like, he would just like let us do what we want in a sense, but like obviously because I, I like Harry and respect him, I, I didn't want to like take the mix. So like he was just fair, us and supportive. So yeah, working with Harry was fantastic, and I hope in the future he's still willing to collab. And I've not like scared him off with like little, little game. <laughs> oh, you're gonna make me cry, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> so could you? Um, I imagine Harry that at some point some um students who are currently working on their projects there are some here but some others might watch this back um and i wondered so what sort of advice would you give them in terms of maybe time frame so i'm thinking of um how long it takes for each part of the process because they might not used be used to the editing process perhaps if they've got to make something um on film so i wonder if you could talk about that kind of time based process um, and then maybe uh, you could just mention some of the technology or technological choices that you make. So I'm interested to know uh, what editing um, program you use, uh, what you're using to film, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, yeah, well, with the, we're coming up with the show. Um, for this one, I had, let's say, I didn't really have a time frame at the beginning of it. And then I realized, because I was kept on putting it off, and the, when you've, think fine okay I'm gonna have an idea I've got an idea work with it I'd say obviously don't take too much time you know have, you have to know when your deadline is I gave myself about a month to to come up not just with the ideas but get a working draft of each script going and that's the thing with um everybody else they probably I wouldn't recommend working on three scripts at once because it it's not the easiest thing to do but um take that idea and just play around with it don't stick to one thing but also don't throw anything away until you've got like unless you know full well okay that's what i'm doing moving forward until you get to that point just have some it's the most fun part of it just coming up with the ideas um and then obviously once you've got that idea say if you give yourself a month that's what i usually do give myself a month to just come up with the ideas play about with them get something down because once usually once you start it and you've got an idea that you're comfortable with it, it will just usually just flow it will just happen like you might obviously hit a block here and there but as long as you stick with it um by the end of it because i'm sure everyone who's ever written a script will tell you you will always hit a brick wall whilst writing as long as you just persevere through it and don't instantly think oh no it's no good do something else it it's so much easier because once you get past that point you can i'd recommend letting other people read it stuff like that get feedback get as much feedback as you can from a bunch of different people like with mine because they're science fiction in nature I like to get opinions from people who are fans of the genre and people who aren't familiar with it to see if it still makes sense and lines up um so yeah just give yourself enough time to to come up with the idea to finish the idea to start writing get feedback and then if that all goes according to plan you should, you'll have so much more of the show than you realise. Because that all, it always sneaks up on you that you've got basically a whole show done and written and, yeah, ready to go. And 
that's happened with me with this. Um, I realized by the end of it, oh, there's three scripts here. Yay for me. Um, so, uh, yeah, that's the advice I would give. Just don't, just, just persevere. Don't give up with it because it's horrible in the moment. I had so many times throughout this show where I thought, nope, that's a stupid thing. I'm sorry, cast. We're doing something else. So many times that came across. I just thought, no, stick with it. And look, and then it just happens. Like I had this show done within weeks. I had weeks left. Um, so I didn't even have to rush the editing. And with regards to like editing and filming and that, um, I got in contact with some people and I've just, there was a, there's a free editing software. I use a free editing software called um, Shotcut. Um, it's not the most advanced thing ever, but especially if you're working off a laptop or anything like that, it's very easy to just cut cut the clips together, put them in an order, put your music in and just go because nothing in this show is very complex. It's just, it takes a lot of time, but it's not, I didn't really do any fancy editing tricks. Mainly it was with the camera, like when I, to make it easier to cut to each shot. Um, and with regards to the camera, I ended up buying one, but you can just do it off your phone. It's very easy to do. I did my festival show last year by salitaping my phone to each wall in my house and just playing around with it. So, yeah, as long um, that's basically it. You can use any camera you've got. It doesn't have to be like a top of the range camera. It can literally just be your phone. And again, free editing software. I managed to get this entire show done with that and didn't cost me a penny. So it's uh, <laughs> that's what I'd recommend using because unless you're making like five shows every month, you can't really justify the amount to pay or to spend on an editing software. So yeah, that's my very long wind winded answer over. No, it was a really good answer. So um, how long would you say that it took you to edit maybe one of the um, pieces that we saw? Um, it's, a, it's strange. They all took very uh, varying lengths of time. Like I thought Darkest Night would be the longest one. It took me about two hours. That was easy. Dar um, time locks took me a little bit longer, but I managed to get it down. It was angel therapy that was the absolute pain because I was cutting from three separate ones. It took me about over 10 hours to edit that together. Um, so yeah, so that's the one I thought would be the easiest as well. So yeah, it just varies on what you're doing really. Um, so it can go anywhere from these shows from three to 10 hours. So it gets very tedious, but you just have to stick through it. Otherwise you'll never get it done. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else got any more questions for Harry or his cast? Yes, James. Hi. I was wondering, like, because as I said, you were in all free shows and everything. What did you? Which one did you find most easiest to do, like with cast and filming and everything? And which one was most challenging for you? Um, what? I'd say it's a, well, the easiest would be a tie between um, Darkest Night and Angel Therapy because I've got people to bounce off of. The pain was time locked because it's, you don't realize how difficult it is acting to nobody for the whole show. Um, but yeah, again, it's easy with ensemble cast, like with angel therapy, therapy, I could bounce off Ryan and Ronan so easily and just improvise. And with Darkest Night, that was one big improv really. So yeah, that's what uh, Time Locks was absolutely the most challenging out of those three. Um, yeah, it was awful to do, but it was also fun. So <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, Scott. Uh, with, with Time Locked, I, I personally felt quite privileged because I actually got to see you actually working on that. So I, I, I actually got to see you working. And I remember what when you were kind of going through it in your head, you took about four or five camera shots just for that one part. Mm -hmm. Like, did, did you ever, like, go back and just say, like, or oh, this one's clearly better than this one, or was it actually really difficult to like determine which one to pick? It, yeah, because um, going back in the edit, I gave myself plenty of options, and I, I had over, for a 27-minute show, I had over 10 hours of footage just of different takes. I had about five different line readings of each line, yeah, so it, it was really difficult because you think, you'd watch, you think, oh, it's definitely that one, and then the next one would be better, and you think, oh, yeah, definitely that one. Then you'll think maybe the other one. And then you'll get to the next line. And it's like two different things. And it's like, do I go for the one that lines up? Or do I go for the one that think that's better? What if I think it's better and other people don't? It, yeah, I didn't do myself any favours on that one. But 
yeah, I very much went through that process, yeah. Ronan. Yeah, um, I, I don't know if this question's already been asked because I came in a bit late, but um, I, me also being a bit of a comic book fan and stuff, I noticed that, um, especially with like Time Locks as well, which was probably the most mysterious one because I had no idea what it was about, um, which it was brilliant, by the way. Um, <laughs> how do you go about um, implementing your influences in without it, like, and also incorporating your own sort of personal things? I'm aware there are other people out there that are doing, you know, like very influenced pieces and that. Mm. Sorry, it's a bit of a question. No, it's okay. Um, yeah, with like the influences and that, like, I because th- like I said with it before, um, I think. I wanted everyone else's input, like their personalities on the screen, but that also includes me. Like, yeah, with Time Locked especially, I thought, I'm going to go for a bit of a Doctor Who vibe, absolutely. I'm going to have to take inspiration from that. But it's going to be my kind of it. So it's, yeah, like I took the, I wore the long um, 10th Doctor coat and the sonic screwdriver, but I always had it not as me doing an imitation. That's just maybe that character because he's a time traveller. Just had he just take took influence as well, but then go from that point on. It's like okay, you can see the influences, but it's clearly a different, a different character, a different thing. Um, so yeah, it was sometimes it was difficult because I would do a line that I think that's too much like the Doctor. I need to do that again in my way. So it was sometimes difficult to keep those in check, but I think yeah, it's good to have those influences as well. So it was there. It was a balancing act really of keeping them in there without it overpowering it, yeah. Great, any more? Yes, Ryan. So Harry, what does the future hold? Because after the credits, they're like a little cliffhanger and I thought Harry Foster's was going down the horror route. <laughs> so I, like, I thought like lockdown's changed a lad. <laughs> Um, yeah, as a huge Marvel fan, I couldn't resist an end credit scene. Um, <laughs> yeah, I've uh, that's um, a little teaser for the next one of these. Um, that I've already started writing and getting to. Ca- I'm going to start casting soon for that um, because I know me. If I think I'll have a week off, that'll turn into a month, and that'll turn into next year. So I also think with a show like this, with like the horror route, it can be anything. We can put anything in the show and put our own um put our own spin on it and yeah it, it can fit because there isn't really something to fit into there's just here is a sci-fi show on a random earth let's have a go so yeah i wanted to i want to do like a ho- short horror piece and i think the next one i do will be a bit more a tiny bit more horror theme because i'm not the best at it so i'm going to get like yourself ryan and uh, we've you know we've had conversations about how would we do it if we had to like if we had to come up with a horror piece um, so it's about taking the influences as well from people that I know, because that's what I think made this show so special. You can see everyone's fingerprints on there as well. So yeah, just keep on going. Good. That was um, that was a perfect question for the end, but I just want to ask one more thing before <laughs> you uh, go, Harry. So you've now had a good go at making stage performances and uh, work for the screen. And I wondered uh, if you had a preference. Um, I think, uh, it's gonna, I, it, I really think it depends on the show. Um, because I think some shows do just work better on screen and some do work better on stage. Like, there's a bit of pressure off of you on screen because you can take your time a bit more. Um, and it does offer, you know, quite a few more options, but there's also something really special about the stage that you can't have like the audience interaction or anything like that. Or you can't get their live reactions. So I think, I I mean, for the foreseeable future, I'll have to keep on working on screen anyway, but I don't really have a preference per se. I just have, if I was doing a show, I would prefer to do it on stage or on screen. Okay, great. So I think we should probably um, wrap up. But um, just to remind everybody, of course, that this is a sort of slow build up to Excel Festival 2021. um, And we're hoping that Harry will also have something to showcase in the festival alongside all of our brilliant current students 
Um, so we hope that you will join us then. Um, but thank you everybody for coming along for the premiere and for the Q and A. It's lovely to see everybody, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Harry. Lovely, well done, Harry. Thank you very much. Thank you for voicing God, well David. Done, <laughs> well done. I really enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Good to listen in. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>